So as our quick uh, head-first dive into how all of this will work, let's do this. Go to your Start menu and search for the program Node, N-O-D-E, and it should start popping up Node.js command prompt. So search your Start menu for Node, and you should see Node command prompt. Not node.js, node command prompt. Click it. This brings us back to 1985. Command prompt. You need to type commands here. There's no clicking and dragging. You need to know the right command. And you'll see once we, and I'll give you the handout, once we know about five commands or so, we'll, we'll be set. Really what we use this tool is to compile our project to the platforms. We're still going to write our, our apps as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And we'll still do that in Notepad or whatever code editor you want, but we'll need to know some of this command line magic to do the compiling and such. Um, type cd space desktop. Space desktop. I capitalize desktop, not necessary, but capitalize desktop, and press enter. CD space desktop. And then type DIR, press enter. We're looking at the desktop. CD, change directory. We've changed into the desktop directory, the desktop folder. DIR, directory listing, show me what's on the desktop. Result, there's my desktop. I see the icons on the desktop. Well, as text representations, there's the icons. There's the RoboCode link. There's RoboCode. I see Opera web browser. There's Opera. So what I'm seeing here is the folder that I can see in a nice visual way here that we've been used to using computers for a long time. Uh, how many of you um, ever used on a regular basis the command prompt? A couple of us, okay. We how many? Use this. It's a, to get there to the status like it. Has yeah, exactly. Been. That's much more common now, isn't it? Maybe, uh, it's making a comeback. In, mm -hmm. How many of you use the command prompt in the last year? Few people, okay. How many of you used it in the last week? Okay, that's pretty impressive. So this was the way that for a long, long, long time computers worked. You typed a command and it did what you wanted. And then graphical interfaces came out in the late, late, late 70s, early 80s, and now they've pretty much all over the world, taken over the world. But they're making a comeback with some of the more advanced things like web projects using SAS and LESS and other preprocessors and um, it's making a comeback to some in some quarters, the advanced programmers. So if you've never used this before, or if you haven't used it in a while, again, this is a culture shock. Where's my icons? Right click doesn't work. Uh, I can't click on anything. Well, and if you type it wrong, if you typed D E R instead of D I R, it'll say. DER is not recognized as an internal or external command operable program or batch file. Error. Okay, type the wrong command. So we're going to um, create our first quick Cordova project. I did CD to change into the directory of the desktop. I type DIR to see the desktop. This tells you also here on the C drive, in the users folder, in the instructor folder, in the student, you're a student or lab? lab? Lab. You're in the C drive user folder, lab folder, your account, desktop. So at the desktop, I'm going to uh, create a, a project. Let's type Cordova space create space test zero 01. 
we're using the Cordova software and the create command to create a new project called test1. That's as if I had opened up Visual Studio or Eclipse and I go into File, New, and I create a project and I save it in a folder. But with three words, it does it all. Instead of waiting for the program to launch, going up to the menu, waiting for that to happen, saving it, etc., etc., if I know the right commands, it just does it. But nothing happens until... Enter. You enter the command. Nothing's going to happen until you press enter. So let's press enter. Creating a new code of the project. Great. If you see on your desktop, test one. Don't look in the folder yet. But we've got a folder there on the desktop that was just created, test one, in the command prompt. We'll look inside of it in a moment. It's not that interesting yet. If we need to do any work on this actual project, we need to be inside of the folder of this project. CD, which is change directory, also known as a folder, space the name of your folder, test01. We created a folder for a project called test01. If you called it my amazing project, we would do CD my amazing project. Enter. The command prompt tells you, now you're in the folder, test one. Type Cordova, platform, Cordova space platform, space list. Installed platforms. These are the operating systems installed into our current project, test one, nothing. These are the available platforms that we can install. These are the operating systems, the mobile devices, or other operating systems that we can install onto our project. Amazon Fire OS, which is becoming deprecated. Amazon's probably going to drop it. Windows Phone 8, who cares, deprecated. Android, Blackberry, that will be deprecated soon enough. Browser, which is Chrome, Firefox OS, that will probably be deprecated soon. WebOS, Windows. I don't see iOS. I don't see Apple, Mac platforms. Again, we're on a Windows device. On a Windows computer, we cannot create completely the iOS version. If I do these steps over on my Mac at home, and I get up to this point, Cordova platform list, it'll show everything except the Windows ones. And it'll show iOS. So then I can't create Windows projects on a Mac. Yes? Yes. What I skipped was, this is already all set up for us here. And I have to set it up here because it would take a while for us to set up. And I'll have instructions for everyone about how to set this up at home soon. But it's already set up. So um, I want to see, I want to play with the Android operating system. Uh, Cordova, platform, add, Android. This Android that is listed here is not Android 7 Nougat. This is Android Cordova Platform 6. There's a distinction. Don't worry about it. It's don't worry about it. Cordova Platform Add Android. Enter. This one will take a little bit longer to process. It's going to check our project. It's going to connect back to the Cordova mothership. Uh, download the appropriate software. Set it up inside of our folder. Creating Cordova project. You'll get some feedback. Creating Cordova project for the Android platform, path, etc., package, etc., name, activity, Android target, Android 25. That's like Android 6 or so. 
sub-project path, etc. So a lot of we're gonna get some feedback. It's gonna sometimes not be that user friendly. Um, there'll be errors that might pop up. If there's an error, it'll tell you. If there was no problem, it'll probably just put you back there, ready to go. The uh, test one project a moment ago was about 32 kilobytes size, and now it's 5 megabytes. So it's grown about, what is that, 500 percent kilobytes to bytes? But still, 5 megabytes is a tiny project. 5 megabytes. That's like a really, really high quality picture from your digital camera. So right now this project is about 5 megabytes, 5 and a quarter megabytes. Cordova. Um, emulate. Android. I don't have my real device plugged in. I want to see this project, but I don't have it plugged in. We have a built-in uh, emulator. We have a virtual device. So let's let's try this out. And uh, Cordova, emulate in Android. Enter. It's going to look inside of the folder. It's going to process it. It's going to take a moment the first time. Subsequent time should be a lot faster. It's getting like the latest versions of some of these libraries and such. Subsequent times will be faster. Eventually then it will pop up a virtual device, a window here that it's like a mini Android running on your screen. We'll just wait for that and it'll be like a real device booting up. We'll just wait for that a moment. Anyone having any trouble at this point? Any of these commands didn't do what you wanted? If you don't type it right, it just won't do it. So if you didn't type it right, type it right and then it'll do it. Are we doing this at the beginning of every class? No. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll remind us. This might be a good thing to do early on as soon as we come in, just to speed up the first compilation, and then after that it'll go faster. Yes. Is there like a batch file? Technically, we are running the batch files already. Uh, this Cordova emulate is actually behind the scenes, something like Cordova prepare, and then Cordova compile, so this is already a batch file, but you could definitely, if you know some command, Windows command prompt magic, you can write your own batch files to get this done even faster. Eventually this will get done, and yes, when we come in every time, I'll remind us, it might be a good idea to quickly do this every time, as soon as we start. Cordova create, uh, test one. Cordova platform add Android, and then Cordova emulate Android. And I have a handout for all of this that I'll give us. Yours might run faster or compile faster than mine, because I'm also running my recorder, which takes up some resources, but usually yours will work faster. Is the same commands for the Mac still? Yes. So we'll basically, in your terminal, in the Mac, you're going to type these same commands. So you would have to invest in an Apple computer if you want to be a developer for Apple. Pretty much, yeah. Now there are, uh, I think there's a website, there's a service called macincloud.com where you purchase an account there and you'll be able to rent a Mac in the cloud. And that works with this stuff too. I don't know the prices for that, but they have that. Do you recommend uh, Apple Mac or whatever that Yeah. You know, the, the, the MacBooks are cool because they're portable, but they're pretty expensive, starting at least at about 999 And then the Mac Minis, those are a lot more affordable at about 549 or so, but it's a desktop. You need your own monitor and keyboard and such. Right. So yeah, this is the big um, detriment. If you're going to target Mac devices, you need a Mac to run this. It's, Apple set it up. They, they kind of lock down their stuff more than the other platforms. 
Windows or Microsoft uh, is extending an olive branch and they have their version of Visual Studio for Mac just released like two months ago. So you'll be able to do cross-platform via, via the Windows flavor of Cordova a lot easier than on the Mac. Anyone got past this? Anyone starting to see the pop-up of the Android? Android emulator starting up. Cool. It's a little slower, but it'll get there too. No, I don't think Visual Studio will replace it. I think it's an, it's an independent project. It's just that Microsoft was doing their version of it. I don't think it was going to go away, but it is very cool to do it by Visual Studio, although they're still sent. Let's see what it does. Very big, famous, rich company like Microsoft behind it, it would probably be very well. So maybe you might start to see the pop up of this. Anyone get any scary red letters on their map from it? Hopefully not. All your computers should be exactly the same. I did test them beforehand, uh, before the start of part one. They all worked, but if they're acting weird, the short answer perhaps is either do it again or switch to another computer. But mine is still coming up. Yours is taking a little faster. Mine took right here. Build successful. It said a bunch of things. It compiled a bunch of things. It took the HTML code and compiled it specifically for Java. Java is completely different than JavaScript, even though they have the same name. But uh, it compiled it for Java. Mine took six minutes. It built the following APK. It created a real APK file, an Android package, an actual an actual Android app. Uh, that we'll look at in detail eventually. Then I'm going to run it in an emulator. I didn't specify which one, but we've got a built-in one, an Access 5 emulator, I believe. Waiting for that to start. Mine's going to start up in a moment. I think a lot of yours is already starting up. You should see a little boot up screen. <coughs> Yeah. Yes. 